Hello again. We're back. So today we're going to learn about multi body systems. Now, in order to do this, we're going to start off with Atwood's machine. So Atwood's machine is simply a pulley. A pulley is a round wheel or disc that has a cable or a rope that goes around it. And on one side, we have uh, one mass. And on the other side, we have a second mass. Now, <coughs> we're going to figure out what the acceleration, we're going to say find the acceleration of each mass. In order to find the acceleration of each mass, we're going to require us to remember a magic sentence. And let's write that down here. One rope, oops, one rope can only have one tension. So this comes from this this comes from uh, the third law of classical mechanics, right? For every uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, you know, if we have a if we have a, a, a straight rope and we have two people pulling on it, we know that the force on these two people, if I do it in red, so the force on this person is going to be pulling him this way, and the force on this person is going to be pulling him this way. We know that these two forces are the same, so if we call this FT and we call this FT, we know that FT is equal to FT. It's not possible for one rope to have two different tensions in it. And this rule also applies to a rope that goes over a pulley. Just the fact that it goes over a pulley and changes directions does not change this rule. So now, if I was to draw the free body diagram for each mass, let me go ahead and do that. I know ropes can only pull, so this is going to be FT up, and this is going to be FT up. And I also know that these two forces are going to be equal. Then that those are the only two things touching the masses. So I finish my sentence, what's touching it plus gravity, and I get, ooh, OK, I'll do this in red. That's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to have M2G there. Now. In order to continue with this problem, the usually what I do after drawing my free body diagram, that's like step one. And then the next step is I say summation of the forces equals F net. But in this case, since this is a multi-body system, I'm going to say summation of the forces on the system is equal to summation of the forces summation of the forces on the system is the net force of the system. Now, in order for me to write this equation, I need something before I do that. And I'm going to change colors to show you what that is. I'm going to need a path. So I'm going to pick my path to be like that. And that is my path. And the reason why that's a path is because usually when I write a free body diagram, I usually pick up as positive or let's say to the right as positive. 
But in this case, I can clearly tell <coughs> that if, if my m2 is greater than m1, then the number 2 mass is going to go down and the number 1 mass is going to go up. Now, that if I chose this here up as positive, that means the direction of 1 would be positive, but the direction of 2 being down would be negative. Now, this actually makes things more difficult to do. It makes it much easier if I choose a path. So on the left-hand side, I'll say up is positive, but on the right-hand side, I'll say down is positive. And I can do that. There's nothing wrong with that because that's the way this thing is going to accelerate. Also, if you're curious, which acceleration am I trying to find? Number one or number two? And the answer is, if the rope doesn't stretch or if it doesn't elongate, then whatever acceleration the second mass accelerates with, then so will the first mass because they're connected. Just like if you think, if, if you had like two objects that were connected and you accelerate one of them with an acceleration A, well, if they're connected by a rope, then if the first one accelerates here with acceleration A, then so will the second one because they're connected. And that's the same here. The only difference is acceleration of one is going to be up and the acceleration of two is going to be down. So let's go back to our summation of the forces and let's write our equation. Now there's here are the four forces and I'll start with m1 here. Okay, So I've got negative m1g. Why negative? Because up here is positive. You can see my direction. Plus ft. That's, that's this one here. Then we come over here to this one and that's minus ft. Notice this one is going up and down is positive here. And then m2g and that's a plus m2g. Now I'm going to set all this equal to the mass of the system times its acceleration. Now notice, I told you here that the tension force is the same. That means this tension force being positive ST, FT and this negative force, they cancel each other out. Which means, and if I rearrange this term to be first, I have M2G minus m1g. Now why did I rearrange the order? Well it doesn't really matter because I'm adding them and 4 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 4 so adding is commutative so it doesn't really matter I can put this term first it doesn't matter. Now what's the total mass of the system? Well the total mass is just both masses put together And now I can solve for my A by dividing both sides by M1 plus M2. And at the same time, I'll factor out my G here. Oops. And there we go. And that, that's going to be my acceleration uh, for both masses. In other words, whatever acceleration I get here, that means that's the acceleration of number one going up and the acceleration of two going down. Let's just see, technically, let's just test this out and let's, let's make m1 equal to zero and let's make m2 equal to 1. Let's see what happens. From this equation, that would be 1 minus 0 times g divided by, and m1 is 0 plus 1. That means 
1 minus 0 is 1, and 0 plus 1 is 1, so 1 divided by 1 is just 1. And so now you could see that the acceleration of mass number 2 would be g going down. And that's true if, if mass number 1 is equal to 0. So this does kind of make sense for, a, for the, uh, an edge case. But from this acceleration, what can we calculate? Well, understand that if this question was asking something like, how fast is the first mass going after X amount of seconds, now this is, becomes a kinematics problem and we need acceleration to solve that. Or perhaps it might be asking what's the tension in the rope? Now if it was asking what's the tension in the rope, that's okay because now once we find the acceleration, that's what you need first and we got it. We now could do a free body diagram of an individual mass, say let's say we'll take number two, here it is, and we have m2g going down and we have ft going up, and now we don't do a system analysis anymore, we do an individual analysis and we say summation of the forces equals f net, and now we've got two forces, and by the way, for number two, notice here, going down is positive. So we say m2g minus ft equals m2a. And if our objective is to find the tension force in the rope, now all we do is we take this equation here and we solve for ft. So that would be m2g minus m2a, in other words, take this to the other side, it becomes negative, and take this one to the other side, it becomes positive. And now, we can factor out the m, and we get g minus a equals ft. And see, and see so from this, we can't do this, right? We can't figure out what ft is unless we have the acceleration first. And we got that, we got that already from the system free body diagram. So, yeah, so there is one thing I forgot to mention, and that is like, if we even go back to this example here where we had m1 equal to 0 and m2 equal to 1, that would mean that the, it doesn't matter, um, m2 can be anything other than, it, it doesn't have to be 1, it could be anything. As long as m1 is 0, then the acceleration ends up being equal to g. And if that's the case, then if you look here, g minus g would give you 0. And that means that the tension force would be zero. And that is true if you think about it. If there is no M1 mass, then there's nothing to resist. And so the, uh, the tension would be zero in that case. The other thing which I'm gonna mention is that the pulley itself, this pulley, uh, must be frictionless, and so no friction in the pulley, in the, in the pin joint here that's spinning, and also, or it could be a ball bearing, also the pulley cannot have a mass. Because if the pull, pulley, in real life, if the pulley has a mass, then it's going to take uh, energy to rotate that pulley and then that's going to change things as well, but that's not part of this course. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind in order to make this problem uh, simplified.
Okay? But many times, if the mass of the pulley is small in comparison to the hanging masses, this is an excellent approximation. So you'll get an answer that's very close to the real one. Okay, so the next question we're going to do is going to be a hanging mass question. And a hanging mass question looks like this. Now in this situation, we'll say this is mass number one, and we'll say this is mass number two. And what we want to find in this case is the acceleration of each mass. But also, we're going to consider that there is no friction in this problem. Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out what the acceleration of these masses is using the same technique that we used in the previous question. You are given m1 and m2 and solve for it as an equation. Pause the video. Okay, so the first thing we have to do in order to solve this system of the hanging mass is uh, draw the forces on each mass to be able to complete the free body diagram. Let me change colors here. And I'll draw this one here as my tension force, here as my tension force. And I've got a force here, which is my normal force. And I've got a force down, which is my M1G. Um, then I've got a force here, M2G going down uh, and that's it so there is no friction so I don't uh, have any other forces here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my paw oh yeah okay first let's do my positive path let's do that in this color and I'm gonna go like this there's my positive direction now I'll do my summation of the forces on the sorry system is equal to F net of the system. Now that means I've got positive FT here, negative FT here plus M2G from there. And that's going to equal my total mass times the acceleration of the system. Now, I notice these two guys cancel each other out. So I get M2G equaling m1 plus m2 times a for the system and now you know remember this I've kind of skipped one part but this is m a of the system right and then I just replaced m system with the sum now I can divide both sides by the sum and I get m2g divided by m1 plus m2 and that gives me the acceleration of the system. I hope you guys got that correct. So from here we would be able to calculate uh, any type of a kinematics question like for example we could calculate uh, if we knew the distance from here to the to the to the floor, let's say we could say 
how long would it take for mass number two to, t how much time would it take for mass number two to touch the ground? That's a kinematics problem, right? But now that we have the acceleration, it's, it's possible. The other thing we could do, again, is we could ask for the tension force. Now, in this case, it would probably be easier to do the free body diagram of the first one. So if we do, let's say, number one in this case, free body diagram, and we went like this, and we just have one horizontal force on it, and that's the tension force, and we went summation of the forces is equal to F net, which is equal to MA. In this case, since there's only one force, I know there's two other forces, the Fn and the Mg, but those are vertical and they're canceling each other. The only unbalanced force is the tension force. So then I'd have Ft equaling Ma, and then I could calculate this tension force simply by multiplying mass number one by the acceleration, which I found out earlier from the system analysis. So these are the types of questions that you can get in this situation. So why don't we try another one now? And I'm going to set up the question for you again. And let's see if you guys, if you can do this one on your own. In this case, again, it's the exact same problem. This is mass number one. This is mass number two. However, in this case, we have mu k friction. We have m1, we have m2. Now I'd like you to find the acceleration again, but this time the hanging mass is with friction. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can calculate or find the equation for the acceleration of the masses uh, using the method from the previous questions. Go ahead and pause the video. So the solution to this problem with friction, let's first put the, uh, we've got friction going this way, we've got tension going this way, we've got normal force going up, and we've got m1g gravity going down. Now these two vertical forces, the normal force up and m1g going down, they cancel each other. Then we've got tension force here, and we've got m2g here. One quick question sometimes students ask is, is there any friction on mass number two? Well, if you remember the equation for friction, it's equal to mu Fn. Is there a normal force that is acting this away on mass number two? And the answer is no, there is not. So therefore, if Fn is zero, then so is friction. Now, getting back to the question here, uh, let's write out our summation of the forces on the system equals F net on the system. And we have, let's actually uh, erase this first. Let me just go back here because I don't want this thing here. All right, so let's do it again here. Summation of the forces is equal to F net on the system. We've got negative force of friction. Oh, sorry, we gotta write down our path first. Okay, so our path is like this. Our positive direction. Okay, so we've got negative force of friction. Oops, wrong color. Right, that's from here. And that's in the negative direction because of the path that we chose. And then we've got plus Ft here. And then minus Ft here. And then plus M2G 
from here. Okay, now all this is going to equal m cis times a. And notice these two guys, the plus tension and the negative tension, these cancel. By the way, do you notice that this canceled before as well here? Now, this, is, this seems to be happening all the time. So this is actually called an internal force. I like to describe it as an internal force. And internal forces will always cancel. In other words, in a system where you have two masses that are connected to each other, this tension force is going to pull on one mass and it's going to pull on the other mass in the opposite direction. So it's always going to cancel. So one of the things you can do is once you get used to these problems is you can actually simply ignore the internal forces when you recognize that they're going to cancel out. In any case, this turns out to be friction plus M2G equals M1 plus M2 times A. And now we can replace friction with its equation. Now, please understand that the friction is on mass number one. Okay? Therefore, since the equation for friction equals mu Fn, and in this case, Fn is equal to mg, that means we can write down negative mu k, it's kinetic because this is moving, it's accelerating, times m1g. It's very important that you remember that it's m1, okay? Because the friction is on mass number one. Plus m2g equals m1 plus m2a. Now let's solve for a. And at the same time when I solve for A, I'll divide both sides by the m summation of the masses. And also, I'll rearrange to put this term first because I don't like uh, this e equation starting out with a negative symbol. So I'll just go m2g minus mu k m1g divided by m1 plus m2, and that's equal to A. And the last simplification which I can do here is I'll factor out the G. So I'll get M2 minus mu K M1 and multiply all that by G. And then I'll divide by M1 plus M2. And that gives me the A. And that's the solution for this problem. See you next time.